New York City, specifically the Bronx, may be considered to be the birthplace of hip hop. But over the years, several big names in the genre would also come out of nearby Long Island. Rakim, Public Enemy, EPMD, and De La Soul. De La Soul members, Kelvin, Postanus Mercer, David, True Boy the Dove, Jolicor, and Vincent Maceo Mason formed the group in 1988 in the Amityville area. True Boy, who was born in Brooklyn, and Postanus became childhood friends after the latter relocated to Long Island from the Bronx around the age of 10. The two of them then hooked up with Maceo, who was also born in Brooklyn, when they were all enrolled in summer school while attending Amityville Memorial High School. After class ended for the day, they would head back to Maceo's house to listen to records and get inspired. As time went on, they branched off and had separate solo spells in local groups, before ultimately deciding to form a rap group themselves, reuniting under the name De La Soul. The name came from Postanus's idea that since their approach to music came from their heart and soul, that they should just go with From the Soul. While the concept made sense, True Goy insisted that From the Soul just didn't sound quite right. So he suggested that they go with De La Soul. Fellow classmate and neighborhood DJ Paul Huston, better known as Prince Paul, would not only play an integral role in the group's rise to fame, but also go on to achieve major recognition himself for his skills on De La's debut album, in which he pioneered new approaches to hip hop production. He first linked up with the group through Maceo, who also DJed. One day, Paul went over to Maceo's house to hear what the guys had been working on. After listening to their demos, Paul knew the guys had something special and wanted to get them in the studio as soon as possible. De La also became prominent members of the Native Tongues Collective, along with A Tribe Called Quest, Black Sheep, Queen Latifah, and the Jungle Brothers, among others. The New York City-based crew was made up of like-minded hip hop artists who would help bring intellectual lyricism that addressed a range of topics to the mainstream. Together with the use of eclectic samples that would take on a distinct sound, they would be pioneers of so-called conscious hip hop, alternative hip hop, and jazz rap. With the help of Prince Paul, De La secured their first deal with Tommy Boy Records, and their debut single called Plug Tunin dropped in June 1988. Due to the lyrics in the song, the group members were, inadvertently, bestowed the alternative nicknames of Plug One, Plug Two, and Plug Three. The group's debut album, Three Feet High and Rising, would be released the following year. Eight singles in total were released, but none did better than the track that would be forever known as their signature hit, Me, Myself, and I. It made it into the top 40 on the Billboard Hot 100 and captured the top spot on the rap, R&B hip hop, and dance charts. People say I sit and try, but when it comes to being De La, it's just me, myself, and I. The project included De La's concept of the D-A-I-S-Y, or DAISY Age, an acronym standing for the Inner Sound, y'all. As a result, audiences were quick to peg the members of the group as hippies. The stereotype greatly agitated them, as they always envisioned their career as a constantly changing style. This frustration would reveal itself in their next recording sessions. In the press kit for their debut album, the members explain their stage names. Pasta Noose. Pas is backwards for sop, and the noose is backwards for sound. Sop, sound. True Goy the Dove. True Goy is yogurt backwards. Yogurt, I enjoy to eat yogurt. I mean, I eat it a lot. And mace actually means making a soul effort. The group's second album, and arguably their best, 1991's De La Soul is Dead, displayed a much more mature side to the trio. The cover of the album features a broken daisy flower pot, symbolizing the death of the daisy age and the imagery that went along with it. In a 2015 interview with Vlad TV, Maceo reiterated that the overall image of the group was always about creativity, and over time, the message became misconstrued where people were assuming that their so-called hippies of hip-hop aesthetic, complete with bright colors and flowers, was who they were when it really wasn't. The project spawned several singles, including a roller skating jam named Saturdays, Ring 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 Ha Ha Hey, and the double single, Millie Pulled a Pistol on Santa slash Keeping the Faith. Unfortunately, De La's next two releases, 1993's Balloon Mind State and 1996's Stakes is High, would not be commercially successful. Several years later, the group announced that they would release a triple album series entitled Artificial Intelligence, or AOI. All three albums were intended to be released within a year, 
beginning with Artificial Intelligence Mosaic Thump in 2000, followed by AOI Bionics in 2001. After this, however, the third and final album in the series never ended up being released. In 2004, De La released their first full album after leaving Tommy Boy, titled The Grind Date. The next year, they collaborated with British virtual band Gorillaz on the hit single Feel Good Inc., which won them their first Grammy for Best Pop Vocal Collaboration. De La subsequently issued several mixtapes over the next decade. In the spring of 2015, the trio created a Kickstarter to help fund their upcoming album. It surpassed the original goal of $110,000 in less than 24 hours, skyrocketing to over $600,000. The campaign story reads in part, For the last decade, we've been independent artists, free of a record label interfering in our creative process. This will be our first De La Soul studio album in 11 years. We're excited and ready to create. It's been essential that we find ways to fund, record, and release new music. Typically, the fans have been the ones who support and appreciate our vision. So using Kickstarter and giving our fans the opportunity to be part of the process just feels right. We see Kickstarter as a home for creative minds and a wonderful platform where people who believe, respect, and see the vision can support an idea and make it a reality. The resulting album, titled And the Anonymous Nobody, was released in August 2016. It went on to be nominated for a Grammy for Best Rap Album. Since the medium's existence, De La's back catalog has not been released on audio streaming services or digital media stores. The biggest reason can be summed up with one word sampling. For years, the group's work was held up in limbo due to it not being authorized for digital release. At one point, their label Tommy Boy lost their entire catalog, including De La's material, to Warner Records based on a debt they owed and didn't feel that the process to put the group's music out digitally, including clearing samples, was worth it. The ones used in De La's music were only cleared for physical media distribution, and the wording of their contracts didn't enable them to distribute the music digitally. The members of the group have actually been dealing with sampling issues for many years. Back in 1989, the Turtles filed a lawsuit against the group, their producer Prince Paul, and Tommy Boy. The complaint charged them with unauthorized use of several bars of the rock band's 1969 hit You Showed Me on Transmitting Live from Mars, a track off De La's debut album. The suit was later settled out of court. Eventually, De La's catalog was reclaimed by Tommy Boy Records. In early 2019, De La announced that all their projects would soon be available on digital services. However, as the group expressed in several social media posts, they weren't very happy about it since they would be receiving only 10% of the revenue, with the rest going to the label. After the announcement, Jay-Z declared his allegiance to the trio by barring the catalog from release on his title streaming service. The saga culminated with Tommy Boy postponing the catalog streaming release until negotiations between them and De La were settled. Other hip-hop artists, including Nas, Pete Rock, and Questlove, lent their support by calling for a boycott of Tommy Boy. The issue not being able to be worked out at this time turned out to be a major letdown, since the group was hoping to tie the release to the 30th anniversary of their debut album. After trying to renegotiate again with Tommy Boy, music company Reservoir Media acquired the label for approximately $100 million in late 2020. The deal compromises more than 6,000 masters, including recordings from Coolio, Queen Latifah, Naughty by Nature, House of Pain, and De La Soul. A rep for the company told Variety that they'd already reached out to De La and would work to bring their catalog and the music back to the fans. Sadly, on February 12, 2023, De La Soul lost one of their own when David Trugoy the Dove Jolicoeur passed away. He was 54 years old. While no specific cause of death was given, in recent years, he'd admitted to battling congestive heart failure. He revealed his health issues publicly for the first time in 2017 in the opening scene for the music video of Royalty Capes, a track from the group's latest album. Just the week prior, De La Soul was part of the hip hop tribute at the Grammy Awards. True Goy, however, wasn't on stage with his fellow groupmates. Finally, on March 3rd, 2023, De La Soul's first six albums became available on streaming platforms and digital retailers for the first time.